Makembek for unicorns and decacorns in Southeast Asia, namely Gojek, Grab, Tokopedia, and Traveloka are rumored to be listing their initial shares or IPO this year. Therefore, retail investors are eagerly awaiting the IPO of these jumbo startups. Four unicorns and decacorns in Southeast Asia, namely Gojek, Grab, Tokopedia, and Traveloka, are rumored to be listing their initial shares or IPO this year. Therefore, retail investors are eagerly awaiting the IPO of these jumbo startups. Masana Takahashi, founder of the accounting and financial advisory firm Jito Box, said that retail investors know that Indonesia has a large population and a growing economy, which makes them interested in buying Indonesian technology stocks. Meanwhile, institutional investors tend to be less interested in investing in technology companies that have carried out IPO. Masana say that institutional investors will build portfolios to protect the value of risk so that they will choose companies that play an important role in the country's economy. Meanwhile, CEO of Mandiri Capital Indonesia, Edi Danusaputro, say that the IPO is an exit strategy for startups where the IPO will provide more options for investors to exit or monetize their investments. As for the report, The Future of Fintech in Southeast Asia by Dealroom, Finch Capital, and MDI Ventures in September 2020, the number of fintech startups in Southeast Asia that will pursue a profit-making strategy continues to increase. The total will reach 32 startups in 2023. Profit-making strategies from investors to end investments by maximizing profits and or minimizing losses. This form of access strategy includes listing of initial shares on the stock exchange or IPO, mergers and acquisitions. From Jakarta, IDX Channel's coverage team reported. Yes, stock market players are waiting for the IPO of large-scale startups with unicorn or even decacorn status. However, how have things progressed so far? Have these giant startups expressed their interest in holding an IPO? Let's review it through the next following infographics um, segment. This is the potential initial public offering or IPO of Indonesian startups. Tokopedia actually appoints Morgan Stanley and CT as IPO advisors. Review IPO options via SPAC or Special Proposed Acquisition Company. Mintam Traveloka planning an IPO in Indonesia and the U.S. assessing IPO options via SPAC. Mintam Gojek has not provided any response regarding the potential for an IPO to SPAC. And Bukalapak expressed interest in IPO but management did not specify the timing for the IPO. Mintam Ling Aja, November 2020, the Ministry of State Owned Enterprises is pushing for an IPO in the next one to one and a half years. The opportunity for Indonesian unicorns and decacorns to list their initial shares or IPO this year is considered to be bigger. This is because there are a number of factors such as valuations that are too high, new regulations to COVID-19 vaccination. Vice President Investment of MDI Ventures, Aldi Adrian Hartanto, says that the opportunity for a decacorn like Gojek for an IPO is very large. This is even more of a necessity because they are already challenging to raise private capital. From the rumors of these giant startups to conduct IPO, one interesting thing is that the option to conduct an IPO to SPAC or a special proposed acquisition company or known as blank check company. It is a shell corporation listed on a stock exchange with the purpose of acquiring a private company, thus making it public without going through the traditional initial public offering process. Tokopedia and Traveloka are startups that are currently conducting studies to conduct an IPO through this SPAC mechanism. Meanwhile, for your information, IPO is one of the exit strategy mechanisms implemented by startups. So how many startups companies have implemented an exit strategy to date? The data is in the next graphic. This is the number of Southeast Asian uh, fintech implements the exit uh, strategy. The number uh, in 2017 to 2019, it was keeps on uh, decreasing. 
but the estimation of the number of Southeast Asian fintech that are implementing the exit strategy from 2020 to 2023, the number uh, predicted to keep on increasing from 22 um, South Asian fintech to 32 um, companies. And regarding investment interests, Masana Takahashi, founder of the accounting and financial advisor firm Jido Box, said that institutional investors tend to be less interested in investing in technology companies that have carried out IPO. Masana said that institutional investors will build portfolios to protect the value of risk. Meantime, CEO of Mandiri Capital Indonesia, Edi Danusaputro, ex uh, explained that the IPO is an exit strategy for startups where the IPO will provide more options for investors to exit or monetize their investments. As for the report, The Future of Fintech in Southeast Asia by Deal Room, um, Finch Capital, and MDI Ventures, in September 2020, the number of fintech startups in Southeast Asia that will pursue a profit-making strategy continues to increase. The total will reach 32 startups in 2023. This form a exit strategy including uh, or includes listing of initial shares on the stock exchange or IPO mergers and acquisition. And regarding IPO, how many companies have held IPO on the IDX until 2020? Let's take it to the next graphic. The number of companies held an IPO on the IDX in 2017, it was uh, 35 companies in 2018 and 2019. The number was the same. 55 companies uh, that already held an IPO and in 2020 as much as 51 companies held an IPO uh, on the IDX. The Indonesia Stock Exchange has recorded a decline in fundraising activities through IPO throughout 2020 where the total accumulation of IPO value only 5.2 trillion rupiah with 51 new listed companies. For this achievement, Indonesia ranks sixth um, in the world under the Shanghai Stock Exchange, which listed 180 IPO, Nasdaq 119, Shenzhen 115, Hong Kong 99 IPO, and Japan 54 IPO. Coordinating Minister for Economic Affairs, Erlangga Hartarto, demanded that if in the future, the number of issuers and the value of raising funds in the capital market must be boosted. Of the many companies that have carried out IPO on the Indonesia Stock Exchange, some of them also consist of startup companies, even fostered by the IDX. And let's take a look at the IDX assisted startups in the next graphic. IDX incubator assisted startups that have held uh, IPO in Indonesia Stock Exchange. We have Passport, uh, Yellow Integra Data Net um, TBK with the stock code Yellow. The IPO date was on October 2018, 29 to be exact. The IPO price was on the level of 376 per share. Meantime, Piggy Joe or PT Torindo Guide Indonesia uh, TBK, the stock code of the company was PGJO. Um, uh, the IPO date was on uh, January 8, 2020, and then Castless. Cashless Worldwide Indonesia with the stock code cash. The IPO date was uh, in the uh, 4th May 2020. And the Indonesia Stock Exchange revealed that at least two companies are planning to conduct IPO in the first half of 2021. The startups comes from IDX Incubator, which is a special incubation space for small and medium scale companies to become listed company in the exchange. And hopefully the wait for investors regarding the unicorn startup holding an IPO will soon be answered. And of course, all parties will continue to guard this positive plan. Stay with us because market headlines will be right back after the break.